12 agreements have been reached between Nepal and China today during Prime Minister Pushpa Kamal Dahal's ongoing eight-day visit to China. The two friendly neighbors have also agreed to form a joint technical working committee to review and amend the Nepal-China trade and payment agreement that was signed in 1981. Good evening, I'm Sarah Sapsanama. Let's begin with the headlines of the hour. Nepal and China inked 12 agreements on infrastructures, agriculture among others. During Prime Minister Dahal's visit, the two nations also agreed to review their 42-year-old trade treaty. Department of Commerce raids and sales a sugar warehouse in the capital Skuleshur with 70,000 kilograms of sugar hidden in stock. Suspects of black marketing ahead of festivities. Speaker of Canada's House of Commons apologizes for praising a Ukrainian man who served in a Nazi unit during the Second World War. Opposition also demands for Prime Minister Trudeau's apology. And Nepal's women football team crashes out in the group stage of the 19th Asian Games after being thumped 8-0 by Japan. Nepal's performance in other events also feeble. Twelve different agreement papers have been signed between Nepal and China. The agreement papers have been signed by the secretaries of the related ministries, Nepali ambassador to China, Bishnu Pukar Shrestha, and Chinese officials. The bilateral agreements were signed following the meeting between Prime Minister Pushpa Kamal Dahal and his Chinese counterpart, Li Jiang, held at the Great Hall of People in Beijing this morning. The National Planning Commission of Nepal and the Chinese National Development and Reform Commission have reached an agreement for collaboration. An agreement has been reached for the promotion of digital economy of Nepal, collaboration for green and low-carbon development, and development of agriculture, livestock and fish farming. The two nations have also agreed on the protocol for export of herbs from Nepal for production of medicines in China. With the objective of collaborating in the sectors of science, technology and innovation, Nepal and China have also agreed to form a joint technical task force to assess and revise the Nepal-China Trade and Payment Agreement of 1981. The two nations have also agreed to translate and publish historic texts and collaborate on equipment related to disasters, human resources and Hilsa Simcoat Road project. In addition to this, the Nepal-China Agreement Paper of 2017 for production and distribution in the northern hills of Nepal has also been exchanged. Likewise, the two neighbours have also agreed to form a joint technical working committee to review and amend the Nepal-China Trade and Payment Agreement signed in 1981. At the meeting, Chinese Prime Minister Chiang said, that the house visit to China had further improved the ties between the two countries. The Chinese Premier also hosted a lunch program in honor of Prime Minister Dahal. Premier Dahal was welcomed in Beijing and was offered the Guard of Honor. Premier Dahal had also met with the chairperson of the Standing Committee of National People's Congress, Zhao Leiji, earlier this morning prior to the bilateral agreement. Premier Dahal had embarked on his China visit directly from the USA after addressing the United Nations General Assembly on 21st of September last Thursday. Now, the Department of Commerce, Supplies and Consumer Protection has sealed a sugar warehouse in the capital Skuleshur for operating black market. The sealed Gunjesori Trade Link Private Limited had hidden 70,000 kilograms of sugar. The department believes the warehouse had stored a large amount of sugar to sell it at a higher price during the nearing festivities. A joint monitoring carried out by the District Administration Office Kathmandu, Nepal Bureau of Standards and Metrology Department and Department of Commerce recovered the hidden sugar. It has been understood that the sugar had been stored in an improper manner and did not even have labels on them. Authorities say they have also retrieved bills that prove the company had sold 2.7 million kilograms of sugar in the past two months. A sample of the sugar retrieved from the warehouse has been sent for quality tests over suspicion of adulteration. The monitoring was carried out following a complaint that the company had been buying sugar at cheap prices and selling it at exorbitant rates. Price for sugar two weeks ago stood at 110 rupees per kilogram, and now consumers are having to pay up to 140 rupees per kilogram. Welcome back in our public voice segment. Today we've asked people in several provinces what should be done to avoid controversies during the appointment of justices and ensure the judiciary is independent. Let's take a look at what they had to say.
सरकार ने जो क्राइटेरि बना खोज पास भर आरोप और स्वच्छ छवि का निष्पक्ष कुछ दाग धब्बा नलाक हो राजनीतिक पहुँच पुगे मत अवसर पाने अवस्था तेल टोटली बंद कर रहा ओकालत अनुभव भक्त ये व्यक्ति नियुक्ति नेता को हैंडल में चलने चीज होने भाई ना जस्ट लाइफ नहीं सेलेक्ट करने भाई ना लोकसभा आए को पर कि जून जात दिन पर कि क्या होना चाहिए तेलाई नहीं समस्तों को आएगा जान पानी आवश्यक है मानसियों को कुरा बुझने आई ना अन्य इस तो क्राइम केसेस और लाइक कॉम करने राजनीति आवश्यक है तो ये करने उदयन न्यायपालिका स्वच्छ रिमामय बनाने न्यायालय जो ठावी को हस्तक्षेप ने आज ये अवस्था आगे क्षमता योग्यता आधार मानेर तेल नियुक्ति करूर्ने परिषद को संरचना फेरि पर्च जिस राजनीति घुसना नपा न्यायाधीश नियुक्ति म राजनीतिक भागबंड अंत्य होने पे छुट्टे संवेदना चाहिए जिससे निष्पक्ष रूप में न्यायाधीश को परीक्षा लिओस् मर्यादित बनाओस् तो संस्था को आवश्यक जो व्यक्ति न्यायाधीश नियुक्ति वहाँ को सब भाग पे हृदय सफा होने पर्चा नलाइकन सही किसिम को निर्णय करने न्यायाधीश छाने पे ज्येष्ठता श्रेष्ठता का आधार में प्रमोशन प्रक्रिया व्यवस्थित कर जिला न्यायाधीश न्याय सेवा का कैडर नई सर्वोच्च अदालत र उच्च अदालत का न्यायाधीश नियुक्ति करने हो स्वतंत्र न्यायपालिक को मर्म अनुसार काम होना इम्प्रुवमेंट be appropriate counseling and see regular monitoring the voting is on type any ws select your option a b or c and send it to 34001 to share your opinion with us time now for the international update The Speaker of Canada's House of Commons, Anthony Rota, has apologized for praising a Ukrainian man who served in Nazi unit during World War II. 98-year-old Yaroslav Hunka was sitting in the gallery and got a standing ovation in the Parliament after Rota said he was a hero during a visit by Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky. Canadian Jewish group CIGA said it was deeply troubled that a veteran of a Nazi division that participated in the genocide of Jews had been celebrated. Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau was with Zelensky in Parliament at the time. Thousands of Ukrainians fought on the German side during the war, but millions more served in the Soviet Red Army. Meanwhile, Canada's opposition conservative leader Pierre Poilievre said Prime Minister Trudeau was also responsible for the incident, calling him to apologize. Sports news. Nepal's women football team has crashed out in the group stage of the 19th Asian Games after being thumped 8-0 by Japan. Nepal failed to advance into the second round after suffering two consecutive losses. In the group D match played at Wenzhou Olympic Center, Japan thrashed Nepal 8-0 with Hayate Asawa scoring a brace. In their first match, the Nepali Eves had suffered a 2-0 defeat to Vietnam. Japan and Vietnam had advanced into the knockout stage from Group D, while Nepal and Bangladesh from the, from the same group have crashed out of the tournament. In another Group D match played today, Vietnam thumped Bangladesh 6-1. Nepal will now play for pride against Bangladesh in their last group stage match. The winner of the upcoming match between Japan and Vietnam will top Group D. Now, Nepal's poor performance at the 19th Asian Games in Hangzhou has continued today as well. Nepal faced defeat in cycling, judo, taekwondo, fencing, wushu and basketball today. Apart from Robin Thapa booking a place in the boxing pre-quarterfinals, all other athletes failed to advance into the next round. Robin defeated Indonesia's Dio Koibanu 4-1 in the men's 51 kg weight category to secure a place in the last 16. In the women's below 66 kg weight category boxing, Benita Thapa Mugger lost to Chinese Taipei. 
in the men's 71 kilograms weight category. Dipesh Lama suffered defeat to India's Nishan Kiv. Nepal's performance in judo was also weak today. Manita Shrestha, Jangabadur Saru and Puram Shrestha all suffered losses today on the basis of Ippon. It was a disappointing day for Nepal in Taekwondo as well. In the pre-quarterfinals of the below 49 kilograms weight bout, Anjali Tamang lost to Thailand's Panipak. Rahul Kubal also could not advance from the first round in the 58 kilograms weight category. Prem Bahadur Limbu and Swastika Tamang also suffered losses in the first round of single Pumsai. Japan also thrashed Nepal 22-4 in 3x3 basketball today. In mountain bike cross-country cycling, Nepal's Usha Khanal and Suraj Rana Magar failed to complete the designated distance. With this, Nepal's chance of winning a medal in cycling has ended. In Thaulu of Wushu, under women's Changkwan, Nepal's Susmita Tamang finished 8th out of 11 athletes. In Thaulu, under the men's Taiji Kwan, Nepal's athlete finished last in a group of 18 players. Nepal competed in 23 categories of fencing today, but all the athletes faced defeat. In tennis, Pradeep Karga crashed out from the second round. Pradeep lost to Japan's Sintoro Mochi Juki in straight sets 7-5-6-1. That is all for the moment. Thank you for watching. Good night.